So, well done, Stuart McGill. A little bit extra flight on the off stump and a lazy shot straight down towards mid-off and Stuart McGill gets his first wicket and what a breakthrough for Australia just five or ten minutes after lunch. Well, I thought that was a dreadful sloppy shot. He just stands up and drives through the ball. There's no bend in the left knee. He doesn't get to the pitch of the ball. Just hits through it and it's a comfortable... Well, it's just so easy. I don't think he'll be... Uh, Thought of too well when he returns to the dressing room. 81 for five. Mohan Khan, another local from this area in Royal Pindi, comes to the crease. The fall of the fifth wicket just 10 minutes or so after lunch on the first morning. Oh, this is a gift wicket. Just tosses it up and he hits it straight down mid off throat. I should think he went back to the dressing room and there was silence. Usually when uh, players play an awful shot, and this was a terrible shot. I don't know if he's trying to go over the top or not, but uh, it's a gentle leg spinner. I'm saying that there's some slow turn here, but there's nothing vicious about the bowling or the pitch. And therefore, it demands of the batsman that shot selection has to be good. He has to hold his concentration together. Good defence, can score runs on it. But, I mean, he's just hitting at the ball as if it was a flat, good pitch. Ball coming on with true bounce. Colin Miller has been relieved from the pavilion end and Stuart McGill to bowl his ninth over. Bit short with a bit of bounce and got him. So McGill has two wickets, one on a sloppy shot to mid-off and one chasing the wide bouncing leg break. And the top edge and how often do we see a right-hander cut the ball in the air to point and this one, Moen Khan is out, caught by Damien Fleming. Well, it's a sloppy shot, but you've got to give credit to the captain, Mark Taylor, for swapping the bowler around. Nothing was happening. Good partnership by Anwar and Khan. And so he made something happen by moving the bowler around, swapping ends, and he got the wicket. Yep, I'm sure he's crossed with a pretty bad shot. And it's 140 for six. And that's where it was, guys. He's in the air, though. Fleming is getting under it, a backward, backward square lead, he's got him. So, Wazim Akram wasn't up to the pressure that the Australians were placing upon him, and what a wicket for the Australians. Out for naught. Well, it was, they kept up three men round the bat. Good captaincy again by Mark Taylor. Keep him under pressure, they know he likes to go for the big shots. And he's gone for it straight away, without getting used to the pitch, or the bowling, and just top edged it in the air. Sort of a lap sweep, probably there just a little under it, a little too soon. And it looks a simple catch, but it's very nicely taken. High up, cloudless sky, not as easy as it looks. 140 for seven. And got him. So first ball of the new over, the batsman is standing there, the umpire hasn't raised his finger. The umpire is saying, well, what are you going to do? It's off your foot. So the Australian players are just standing all together at cover. And the best one stayed in his crease. The umpire didn't move. And then he motioned to say to the players, it came off his foot. So he looked there on the replay that it came straight off the pad. So... Great spill of bowling by Stuart McGill. Ah! And around his legs. Leg stump, pitched off stump, and hit leg stump. So he may have played it on, it may have hit his pad, but after the uh, delivery before, the Australian players go in the same spot. And, uh, well, McGill's got three wickets in just over and over. And leg stump. Hill is happy, McGill is happy. And another wicket for the Australians. So Pakistan, eight for 147. Mushtaq Ahmed comes to the crease. McGill has three wickets from his last seven deliveries. And a change in the commentary box. Mike Cowden with him, Alan Border. Thank you, David. A relieved David Hooks. He was 
Some awkward work there in change of shift. Did it admirably. Ah! Appeal for leg before wicket. Umpire Javid Akta pensive. Was certainly worth an emphatic shout. Well, it's frenetic few moments of test cricket this has been. It's been a remarkable day and this has been a remarkable few moments. And indeed, as we thought, Stuart McGill would be employed. It was interesting he was saying last night that uh, he was surprised how well the pitch had withstood first day proceedings. And I've got a sneaking suspicion that the Australians may have misread this pitch. And of course, he also paid great tribute to the resourcefulness of uh, Mushtaq Ahmed as a batsman. Of course, the leg spinners as a uh, fraternity, they have a great regard for each other. I was saying yesterday the amount of time that uh, Shane Warne had spent with Mushtaq Ahmed and helped him considerably, not so much with his wrong end, but with his leg break, as Abdul Kader had so helped Warne with the wrong end, which has never been Warne's strongest delivery. And Abdul Qadir, or Kader, in fact, had two wrong ends, which he used to... nicely and of course Abdul has gone down to Melbourne to play and coach in Carlton Cricket Club this summer he's already arrived arrived a few days ago I know the uh, Carlton District Cricket Club in Melbourne is looking forward to him contributing particularly with clinics for young slow bowlers the mystic cry of catch it Healy still in search of his 356th dismissal but the Australians are more concerned in just getting a wicket, Ramiz. Yes, uh, this one was pushed a little flatter by Mikhail, but uh, again, uh, off the bats. Catch! He's gone this time. He's gone this time. Say Saeed Anwar has gone. Five wickets for Stewie McGill. And in fact, just his third ball, I think, this morning, came back. The pacemen were, not, were unable to do it. And the end of what has been a magnificent hand by Saeed Anwar, mentally strong, played beautifully, just leans forward, he goes pad to bat, taken in close, Saeed Anwar is on his way, magnificent innings, Pakistan 9 for 267. Got to show a little bit of patience. The uh, the leg spinner is a little bit of a new boy on the block in Test match cricket. Just because you've got a side wobbling with four cheap wickets down, doesn't mean to say you're going to get all ten cheaply. You must accept that somebody somewhere will get in, play a decent innings. And got him. Second attempt, and what a catch to Mark Taylor. So the outside edge of the bat, Mark Taylor went to his left hand and bobbled out and he grabbed it again. A great catch to Mark Taylor and what a wicket for Australia just after lunch. Well, that's why I was saying he should bowl off stump, but I couldn't understand him bowling leg stump outside for the sweep because before lunch he'd beaten him roundabout off stump and he's played again, you see, a little airy-fairy shot, really. Hit him quickly, that Taylor. It's probably quite close because of the slowness of the pitch. And he did well to react and catch it again. But it wasn't a very distinguished shot, that real airy fair. He did nothing, just pushed at it. 66 for five. Azar Mahmood, who came in at number six in the first innings, has been dropped down the order to number seven. He won't be facing the first ball. This is why he comes to the crease. We see he just pushes at the ball as Moinka. And it's not a defensive shot, it's not even an aggressive shot. Taylor snatched it, he may well have dropped it. Await the umpire's movement. No movement by the umpire. So 
Another drop catch by the Australians. Well, he's had two now go to his left hand, so he's got to ask himself, is he too wide? See, that little slow leg spinner. Yeah, he's too wide. He's, you know, once you've had two, he should come a bit finer then. Quicker one by Miguel, just trying to shove Malik on his back foot. He did that, but Malik, because it was too short, was able to punch it past the man at bat pad. Well, they're getting some let-offs. Uh, oh, the Pakistan team, Malik was dropped. As was dropped. Oh, and a big fail, and what a catch by Justin Langer at bat pad. He's making that position his own, and flew quickly to his right hand. So, Mahmood after being dropped, the previous delivery faced by Mark Taylor. He got off the mark with a single, and no mistake by Justin Langer. A very good, sharp catch at short leg. Well, they're mentally gone now, the Pakistan players. I mean, he's dropped before this went. It's a nice slow turn. He played a bit too low. And he's just gone straight to the man. Nice neat catch, but uh, wasn't a very distinguished uh, defensive shot. 68 for six. So McGill to the left-hander. Didn't pick the wrong one, but uh, he's got it straight down mid on. And he's got him. So the short pitch wrong one. That Hussain tried to whack over mid-wicket. Funky Cole Miller has just gone back and taken it over his head. Pretty good catch in the end. And the uh, intrepid Australian travellers wave the flag proudly. The short wrong one, as called by David Hooks. Looked to pull this ball over square leg. Hits it to long on. Colin Funky Miller takes the catch gleefully. Mohammed Hussain on his way for 17. Pakistan, 1, 2, 6 for 8. Ah! And that's a big shout. And that's got him. So the full delivery from Stuart McGill may well have been the wrong one that hit flush on the foot. And umpire Peter Willey, no hesitation in giving Stuart McGill his ninth wicket for the match. And Australia just one wicket away from an historic, memorable victory. I don't know what the Pakistani batsmen are doing. They're just putting their front foot in front of the wickets and not really playing at the ball. So that ball has hit him in front of middle and leg. The ball would have carried on and hit the stumps, according to umpire Peter Willey. Jubilation for the bowler, but Mushtaq Ahmed on his way for zero on this occasion. Pakistan, one, two, eight for nine. Uh, I felt a lot better at the beginning of the day than I do now, maybe stiffening up a little bit, but I, I was really, really happy, especially the middle session. I started to get pretty pumped, so it was good. Now, what about without Shane Warne? Do you feel a little bit more relaxed when you're bowling that people aren't comparing you to the bloke at the other end? Oh, I don't know. I think they're probably comparing me a little bit more, actually, that he's not here. Um, I, I'd, I've said it before, I'd much rather he was bowling at the other end. I think it'd be uh, fantastic to work with him. Um, but because he's not here, I guess all of us have got to take a bit more responsibility on A great spell in the middle, as you said. Yourself in just your second test, Colin Miller in just his first test, uh, yet you were able to do some damage to the Pakistani batsman. Yeah, it's nice to be able to work with another spinner, and, and I know Cole turns the ball a lot for a finger spinner, so... I think they were a little bit surprised to see a couple of Australians, new boys, that, that were doing a bit, so it was good. What about late in the day? The last, uh, the ninth wicket partnership, already over 100, a very good partnership. No chances, so you couldn't say that Australia let themselves down. Yeah, look, I, I think uh, our bowlers plugged away pretty well. Maybe a little bit too much width to both batsmen. Um, and I, I think Mushy took no risks, which was unusual. Um, we, we sort of expected him to play a few more shots, so he batted very well. So a very important period first up tomorrow morning. Well, I, I think we'd like to finish this up as soon as we can and, and get the batsmen out there. Well, nice to speak to a young man at the start of his career, and let's hope for Australia and for world cricket that we can have another leg spinner having a long and illustrious bowling career. Well, that's what happened yesterday. Pakistan won the toss, and they finished with 8 for 253, a fabulous century.